Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know. Most of the things that you see in films aren't actually real because they're all just CGI. What a lot of people don't actually know is that even though it's called computer-generated imagery, hundreds of hardworking and talented CGI artists still work on the effects. And a lot of them are actually overworked and underpaid. But their passion in creating wonderful things is what drives them. And what's even crazier about the jobs of CGI artists is that good CGI is CGI that you don't even realize is there. Nice. Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part two. You know when you use your phone's camera and then you tap on a different part of the screen, the camera will actually focus on that part of the screen. In filmmaking, that's called focus pulling. In big film sets, they actually hire an entire person or even up to three people called focus pullers whose one singular job is to operate the focus of the camera. Sometimes they'd even go as far as measuring the distance between the camera and the subject to calculate how many degrees they have to turn the focus knob. That's just how far filmmakers would go to get the perfect shot that would sometimes just last 5 seconds in the final film. And it's crazy to think that a job that requires up to 3 people to do can easily be done by our phones with just the tap of our finger. Nice! Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 3. In shooting films, sometimes the directors would do hundreds of takes for a single shot. What you might not know is that a lot of these shots and scenes can easily be cut out of the film in the edit. Often in the edit, the director can easily decide to cut out a shot or a scene because it doesn't work in the film or it doesn't serve the story. Imagine being a director who worked on a scene for weeks or even months and then you have to make that decision to cut out that scene because you want to make the best possible film. Again, that's just how far filmmakers would go to make the best possible film they can. I recently just hit 1,000 followers on TikTok and I'm super grateful for every single one of you who follows and comments on my post. It means a lot to me. What a lot of you don't actually know is that I have a YouTube channel that currently has 140 subscribers. I've posted a lot of videos there including tutorials, video essays, and short films that you might enjoy. Comment on my videos that you came from TikTok and I'll make sure to say hi. Nice! Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 4. Majority of the sounds that you hear in films aren't actually recorded live. Because they focus more on capturing the voice of the actors, all of the other sounds are usually added after shooting. This process is called Foley, where an edited version of the film is given to Foley artists, who reproduce every single sound that you're supposed to hear when you watch the film. These sounds can be something that's as obvious as a creaking door, or something that's less obvious like footsteps, or something that's not obvious at all like the ruffling of a bed. We don't really consciously notice these sounds, but our subconscious picks up on it, and it's one of the main reasons why we feel like we're inside the film as we're watching it. Thank you so much for 3,000 followers. It means a lot to me that you guys watch my video. Nice! Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 5. Almost all of the films that we watch aren't actually perfect. They have a lot of mistakes, like when an actor faces one direction and then in the next shot he's suddenly facing the opposite direction, or when the actor literally changes clothes from one shot to the next. These are called continuity errors. Continuity in film is the consistency of every detail in every shot of a scene. The reason why there are a lot of mistakes in films is because when editing, continuity is actually the least prioritized factor when choosing a take to use. The most prioritized factor in choosing what take to use is actually the best performance of the actor that will give the best emotion in the film. And the reason why we don't really notice any of these mistakes is because when we watch these performances of the actors or actresses that give the best emotion, our emotions as viewers will actually take over. Sometimes the emotions take over so much that we don't even realize that a cut was made. That's why great editors say that a great edit is not actually what you see, but what you don't see. Nice! Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 6. All films have a different color scheme. Even though they manipulate the colors of the scene, the skin tones of the actors remain unchanged and natural. They do this by isolating the color of the skin from all of the other colors on the scene. They are able to do this because every single human on planet Earth, regardless of ethnicity or race, actually have the same hue of skin, which is orange. There's no black skin, there's no white skin, there's no brown skin, there's only orange skin. We only think that some people have different skin colors because some people have darker orange skin and some people have lighter orange skin some people have more saturated orange skin and some people have less saturated orange skin color grading actually became much easier because every single human on planet earth has orange skin it's actually awesome to know that we are much more similar than we think we are nice 
Filmmaking Facts That You Probably Don't Know Part 7 When we watch a film, for some reason, we know what the character thinks without them even saying a word. This is because the editors can actually use the eyes of the actors to tell the story of what they're thinking or what their thought pattern is. In the book called In the Blink of an Eye by Walter Murch, he explains the theory that the actors blinking can actually tell a lot about a character's thought pattern. If a character blinks, that means that he's finished thinking about what he's thinking about. When a character's thought is not finished, the editor will cut before the character blinks. If a character should finish his thought, the editor will actually cut after the character blinks. We don't really notice this, but editing can actually heavily affect an actor's performance. This is probably the reason why when Lupita Nyong'o won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress, Joe Walker, the invisible performer in the editing room, thank you. She actually thanked the editor. Nice. Filmmaking Facts That You Probably Don't Know Part 8 When making a conversation scene when two characters are speaking to each other, the editors will actually treat us, the viewers, to be a third person in the conversation just listening. Whenever the editor cuts to a character, it resembles us looking at that person. In real life, when you're listening to a conversation, before you look at one person, you have to hear that person say something first before it triggers you to look at that person. To do this in the edit, they use what is called a J-cut. A J-cut is where they cut to the audio first before they cut to the video. You see, Bill, I knew a week. Sometimes we look at one person before he says something because we anticipate them to say something. To do this in the edit, they use what is called an L cut. An L cut is where they cut to the video first before they cut to the audio. Humiliated this editing technique is very subtle and can sometimes just happen for an eighth of a second. She went out to a party, she got sick. It drastically adds the effect that we're inside the film as we're watching it. Nice. Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 9. There's actually a biological or psychological reason why when we watch films, it feels natural for us to see the camera cut from one angle to a completely different angle. I want you to try this for yourself. Hold two objects right in front of you, look at one object and then look at another object. What your eyes actually do is traveling from one object to the next object, but your brain erases all of the information that your eyes see as your eyes are traveling from one object to the next. So when you look at different parts of the room, your eyes travel to different parts of the room, but everything that you see in between is erased by your mind. That's why cutting from one angle to the next feels natural to us. Believe it or not, cutting to different angles, to close-ups, to medium shots, to wide shots is actually a huge innovation in film editing back in 1912, pioneered by David Wark Griffith. They thought that cutting between angles would not make sense, but when they tried it, nobody said anything and it just felt natural to everyone. Knowing this makes me think about all of the normal things in filmmaking that we take for granted. Nice. Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 10. Filmmakers try their best to emulate reality, but film dialogue when two characters are speaking to each other is actually one of the most unrealistic things in film. In real life, if you listen closely, when two people talk to each other, there's actually a lot of overlap. When one person is talking, the other person will actually start talking even though that one person is not done talking yet. One of the reasons for this is because we subconsciously already know what they're about to say. Another reason for this is we may think that what we're saying is more important than what the other person is saying. But in most films, every single piece of dialogue is important to the story. So the characters have to wait before the other character stops talking before he can talk himself. I'm just saying I need to do something substantial in order to get the attention of the clubs. Why? Because they're exclusive and fun and they lead to a better life. Teddy Roosevelt didn't get elected president because he was a member of the... Fiction. It's actually awesome to know that there's a life lesson to be learned from how fictional and unrealistic film characters talk. Nice. Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 11. Have you ever thought that a lot of films and music videos look somewhat the same? Well, that's because they probably have the same popular color scheme that is teal and orange. Teal and orange look good together because they're actually complementary. They're at the opposite sides of a color wheel. And the reason that it's so popular is because in color grading, it's actually one of the easiest color schemes to do. And that's because all of the skins of any actor or actress, regardless of ethnicity, actually has the hue of orange, which means that to get the teal and orange, orange look, you only have to change the color of everything in the scene that's not the skin into teal. Nice! Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 12. When you see a brand show up in a big Hollywood film, even for just two seconds, there's actually a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes that involves contracts and rules. A good example for this is Apple. Apple has a strict rule that villains in movies are not allowed to use Apple products. So if you're watching a movie and you're trying to figure out who the bad guy is, or if you think that a character is gonna turn into a bad guy and then that character uses an iPhone or any Apple product, spoiler alert, that character is not the villain. Nice!
Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 13. Filmmakers use different types of shot sizes to tell their story. They use a combination of wide shots, medium shots, close-ups, and sometimes even extreme close-ups. The closer the camera is to the subject, the more important it is for the story. If you see close-ups in films, it means that the filmmakers want you to look and pay attention to that thing, whether it's an object, an emotion, or a facial expression. But don't always be fooled because sometimes filmmakers can also use this technique to misdirect you. By using close-ups, they can make you think that something is important even though it's not that important which will misdirect you from something else that's more important. Nice! Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know part 14. Shooting your subject's face at a wide angle will make his face look different from shooting his face far away but zoomed in. This is because zooming in with the camera will actually compress the image. Which means that if you have two objects that are at separate distances from the camera, when you zoom in, these two objects will look like they're at the same distance. This is also why shooting with a wide angle lens will make the image look like it's more spacious but shooting with a lens that is zoomed in will make the image look like it's more compact. Nice! Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 15. When lighting a scene, filmmakers actually care more about the shadows than they do about the light. Shadows are what shape the light, which in turn helps the filmmaker set the mood for the scene. A light from the top will create shadows on the eyes, which will produce a mysterious and a hostile mood. Shining a light from the side will produce a shadow that will cover the entire half of the face of the actor, which will set the mood of masculinity. Shining a light 45 degrees to the face of the actor or actress will create a triangular shadow on one eye of the actor or actress. This is the most popular way of lighting a scene in film. Again, the shadows are what shape the light. In order for us to see the light, we must first look at the shadow. I'm so close to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. It would mean a lot to me if you click the link in my bio and check out my YouTube videos. Nice! Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 16. All of the films that we watch are all shot at 24 frames per second, which means that for every second, there are 24 images that are shown at a rapid succession to give the illusion of a moving image or a movie. The more frames that are shown at a second or the higher the frame rate, the smoother the movie will be. Now, we already have the technology to shoot at 60 frames per second or at 120 frames per second or at 240 frames per second. But in films, we still use 24 frames per second. Now, this is because back then, they were trying to find a way to lessen the costs of film. Now they found that 24 frames per second was the lowest possible number of frames to be used that is smooth enough to give the viewers the illusion of a moving image. Ever since this discovery, all films were just shot at 24 frames per second and we just got used to the look of 24 frames per second. So whenever we see movies or videos that are shot at 30 frames per second like this or 240 frames per second, these videos are just too smooth for our brains to connect them to being cinematic films. Nice! Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 17. This year, the war movie called 1917 won the Oscar for Best Visual Effect. A lot of people were surprised because it won against the movies that are Avengers Endgame and Star Wars with spectacular CGI. But the reason that 1917 won is because the entire movie was made to look like it was shot entirely on one single take, even though it was actually shot with multiple takes. To do this, they had to hide all of the cuts. To hide all of the cuts, it requires artistry, skill, and fidelity from the director, the cinematographer, and the visual effects team. They had to use a combination of practical effect, camera tricks, and CGI. But as we're watching the film, we don't really know where all of the visual effects are, unlike with Star Wars and Avengers Endgame. And because we don't know where any of the visual effects are, we become immersed into the story. We become immersed into the journey of the character. This is why great VFX is VFX that we don't even know is there. Nice! Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 18. There are many ways to shoot a scene in film. One of these ways is called the standard coverage. This is done by first setting up the camera and the light on one master wide shot and then taking multiple takes on that one shot. And then after the takes are done, they would reset the cameras and the lights on a different shot, say a medium shot. They would again take multiple takes on that particular shot. After those takes are done, they would again reset the cameras and lights on a different shot, say close up shot. And then again, they would shoot multiple takes on that shot. They would do this for every single scene in the film film that requires standard coverage. This is why as a filmmaker, one of the most important skills that you need is patience. Nice! <laughs> nice! Oh, what Nice! Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 19. One of the preparations that is done before shooting a film is called a storyboard. This is a graphical representation of the vision of the director that illustrates all of the shots of the film even before production starts. This is done so that everyone in the crew would better understand what the vision of the director looks like. To do this, they hire a visual artist to create the storyboard. And sometimes the storyboard would look so good, it looks like an actual comic book itself. By the way, I only have 72 followers on Twitter. Please go follow. Nice! 
Filmmaking facts that you probably don't know, part 20. Before showing a film to everyone, filmmakers actually do test screenings first. They gather a random group of people to watch an unfinished version of the film and then give their feedback through survey. They do this more than three times, each time showing a different version of the film to a different set of people. They do this because when editing, the filmmakers would have seen the movie hundreds of times already that they don't even know what scenes are funny anymore or what scenes are scary or what scenes are working for the movie. This is why as a filmmaker, the best judge of your work is not yourself, but the people who are watching it. Nice!